Achilles challenged the tortoise to a 10-kilometer race. Feeling quite confident in his speediness, Achilles gave the tortoise a two-hour head start. Then he ran as fast as he could at a constant velocity. Which of the following graphs describes the relationship between the possible velocity at which Achilles ran in kilometers per hour and the duration of his race at that velocity in hours, including the two-hour head start? So I encourage you to pause this video now and think about it. Which of these graphs right over here describes the relationship between possible velocities at which Achilles ran, and that's on this axis right over here, and the duration that it would take him, or how long it takes him to finish the race, include the race, including the two-hour head start? Well, one possibility, let's just, let's just remember that distance is equal to rate times time. Rate times time. Or we could say that distance is equal to velocity times duration. All of these, we have duration as the dependent variable and our velocity as the independent variable, or the rate as the independent variable. And we know that it's a 10 kilometer race. So we could rewrite this as time is equal to distance divided by rate. Time is distance divided by rate. Or we could say that our duration is equal to 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers divided by, divided by our rate. Now one thing that we could do is we could just try a, a table with a couple of points to figure out for different rates, what type of, or different velocities, what type of a duration would we see? So let's think about that. So I'll do a rate on this column. I don't have a lot of space, but I think we have enough space for, for two, two or three points. And then let's think about our duration right over here. So let's see, all the rates are between 2 and 18 kilometers per hour. So let's go with, I don't know, let's go with, let's go with 2, 2 kilometers per hour. 2 kilometers per hour. So then what is the duration going to be? Well, it's going to be 10 kilometers. It's going to be 10 kilometers divided by our rate, which is 2 kilometers per hour divided by 2 kilometers per hour. As we've seen in the past, we can treat the units the way that we would treat variables, although they aren't the same. This is the power of dimensional analysis. So this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to 10 kilometers. I'm writing small here, my apologies, so I can fit on the screen. Times, well, times the reciprocal of this. Times, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half, and the reciprocal of kilometers per hour is hours per kilometer, which makes sense. If I'm, well, I, I won't go too deep into it. And what's neat about this is that the kilometers cancel out. We're just left with hours, which is the appropriate unit of, which is the appropriate unit of duration that we're thinking about. And 10 times 1 half is equal to 5. So this is equal to 5 hours. So let me clear that out. And the whole reason why I just keep erasing this is just so I can, so this right over here is 5 hours. Five hours of duration. Five hours. Now just with this one point, which of these graphs seem consistent? So here, and oh, we have to be very careful. It's five hours. That's how long it would take him to while he's running. But we have to include the two-hour head start. So plus two hours, plus two hours. So we have to include this two-hour head start. So plus two hours is equal to 7 hours. Just to be clear what I just did, I divided by 10 kilometers by 2 kilometers per hour. So Achilles would have to do 5 hours of running, but that's on top of the 2 hour head start that he already gave. So his duration would be 7 hours. So let's see which of these graphs are consistent with that. 2 kilometers per hour, 7 hours should put us right over there, but we see that there is not a point here for this one right over here. 2 kilometers per hour, 7 hours. Well, that well this one's looking pretty good. 2 kilometers per hour, 7 hours. Hey, that's not looking good. 2 kilometers per hour, 7 hours. Well, this one isn't looking good either. So literally, just with that one data point, we could think, hey, this is graph 2. Now, another way that you could have thought about this without even having to try out a point is you could say, look, if I'm, if I'm going fast, if I'm going fast, or if I have a high velocity, it should take less time. And if I'm going slow, if I'm going slow, it should take more time. That's just common sense. It should take more time. 
So what's happening here on this graph, when I'm going slow, it is taking more time. And when I'm going fast, it is taking less time. So this one makes sense. This graph, when I'm going slow, it is taking more time. When I'm going fast, it is taking less time. And it never, it approaches, I could go super fast, but I can never break under two hours. And that makes sense, because I gave a two hour head start. So this one makes sense. Here, when I'm going slow, it takes a lot of time, which makes sense. But then when I go fast, it's also taking a lot of time. So this doesn't make any sense based on that. And then graph four, when I'm going slow, I can finish quickly, which doesn't make sense. And when I'm going fast, it takes a lot of time. So that doesn't make sense as well. So with th just this logic, I could have ruled out these two graphs. Now, if we did that, we would have these two graphs to contend with. And it's pretty clear that this one over here is a line, a line with a negative slope, while this one is nonlinear. And when you look at this, does this look like, when you, when you view r as your independent variable, is this a linear equation in r or nonlinear? Well, it's not 10 kilometers times r. It's 10 kilometers divided by r. In order to have an equation like this, it would be of the form, this would be of the form t is equal to some number times our rate plus some other number. And this thing right over here would have to be negative. Now there's no way that I could rewrite that in this form right over here, to have a negative value right over here times r, not being divided by r. So that's another way of thinking about, well, look, this clearly is not linear. I can't write it in this form right over here. So that's another way of ruling out graph one. And this, when you're dividing by r, it actually would have this nonlinear shape. And you could try out more points to, to, to satisfy yourself. So there's multiple ways to, to think about it. And I encourage you to think about it in all of the multiple ways, but graph two is, is definitely the one that describes how that, that describes the relationship between possible velocities at which Achilles ran and the duration of his race, including the two hour head start. If there wasn't the two hour head start, then then this graph would be shifted down by two. So if it wasn't the two hour head start, this graph would be look would look something like this. So I've just shifted everything. I'm just shifting everything down by two, so shifting down by two. But this includes the two hour head start, and that's why this graph is never gonna go, is never gonna go below two hours, even if you were to travel at the speed of light or whatever.